content, right? It's going to be the uh, monthly and yearly premiums to be able to enjoy content like HBO Go and Amazon Instant and all these other kinds of things, Xbox Video, Xbox Music, um, whatever the case might be. Whoever captures that, I think, will probably have the best chance of winning, and they will probably see a 10-year life cycle. Because at that point, guys, it's not about anything that you we were talking about this time. It's not about the hardware. It's not about the capabilities. It's not about the ways in which the symphony between hardware and software work. If it's about the little guys making that extra money and driving the extra mile, then I could see consoles going for another 10 years, which really transitions well into my opinion, which is this. I'm very excited as a consumer, as all of you are, to see a 10-year console life cycle. No question about it, right? But we're getting ahead of ourselves because, and, and by the way, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not ready to jump ship and say that Moore's Law is not going to hold. I'm not, I'm not ready to say that. Many, many of you said that. I'm not willing to agree with that yet. Um, you know, if, were we to be limited by silicon, you probably are correct, but we're not. So I think Moore's Law will continue to, to, um, to really amaze. Moore's Law doesn't hold to what graphical capability is as much as it does, you know, how many transistors we can fit in a small space. And, you know, when, when, the, uh, when the answer is seemingly infinite, then I'm not sure you can really say that Moore's Law is dead quite yet. The point is, that is, that to me becomes a little irrelevant, right? It doesn't matter at that point. It doesn't matter that Moore's Law is or isn't in effect. It doesn't matter what the AAA titles look like or not. I think that what it really means is that gaming consoles have matured a little bit. They've matured a little bit, guys. This generation has matured video games just a little bit. And I think the next generation is going to mature it a lot. A video game console is not just a video game console anymore. It used to be. Sony really piloted the first, um, you know, the, that, that first successful wave of turning a gaming console into, a, um, a, into an entertainment center. Many tried before them. Many of the ones that you guys talked about before where hardware was limiting our software, like in the CDI days, which I know and love very well. Um, but Sony made that first push toward it. Now it seems like everyone's here. We're there now where somebody that doesn't even play Halo could own a 360 easily, which is something that none of us ever thought before would happen, right? Somebody that never has played Madden, never played Halo, could own a 360. Someone that's never played, you know, uh, Uncharted could own a PS3, right? We're, we're in that place, guys. They want that Blu-ray player. They want the capability to stream videos through Netflix in a simple, easy-to-digest platform. Um, and Kinect only you know, keeps it going, right, for, for 360 and so on and so forth. With all of those things in mind, video games have matured a little bit into the place where consoles now have to be the center of entertainment, not just gaming. Gaming is a big part of it, but... If you guys look at this E3, this E3 was not about the games. This E3 was about the experience. It was about the entertainment value. This is turning into, look, E3, electronic entertainment, right? So it's not just about gaming, it's about entertainment. It truly is now. So for my money, um, with everything taking the, the transitions and the market trends that we see um, toward entertainment experiences, I think it's very possible that we could see the next brand of consoles lasting 10 years outside of the gaming realm. But if gaming continues to grow at the pace that it's, that it's growing, and I see no reasons why it wouldn't, I also see the kind of other perspective of seeing it shrink a little bit and seeing, um, seeing some of these consoles, in terms of life cycle is going to shrink a little bit. I could see the life cycle shrinking down um, as, as it's defined from launch to successor, I could see it shrinking down from this generation because if games are really at the heart of it, games are always going to be newer and better on new, newer hardware. And I don't think there's any kind of uh, question about that. So that's what I think. By the way, I love the thoughts that went into this, uh, this weekly ringer. I love the idea of going back through and seeing the different transitions. It's very clear that the market is different in 1988 than it is in 1993. Those are two completely different video game markets. 
Same can be true for 1999 versus 2006, right? Or or 2006 and today. Just look at the Xbox dashboard that was launch, that the Xbox 360 was launched with, and look at the next next generation Xbox experience, and you're going to see consoles that were completely designed for two completely different purposes. And I think you will see how very much the industry, technology, and the purpose of these boxes can change in the course of 10 years. And lest we forget, I'll, I'll use this as my last statement. Guys, it is impossible for companies to do forecasting for 10 years. You just don't see people doing that. They do it. Don't get me wrong. Every company has 10-year forecasts. But... Companies don't think in 10-year cycles because they can't, because it's, impo it's like predicting the weather. It's virtually impossible, right? So when a company designs a piece of hardware, they're not thinking 10 years in the future. They might be thinking five, but they're not thinking 10. And I think that that is be by the, the very nature of a free market economy, and I don't think that should change. So if that affects the way that our consoles work and our consoles innovate, then so be it, because I'm kind of happy with that, that idea. Companies can't project. 10 years into the future know what kind of an experience is going to look like. I don't think anybody that designed the 360 would see the 360 as it stands today and say, yes, I predicted that when I launched it. I just don't see that happening. Um, you might be able to say the same for the others, except for Nintendo, who I think really has the vision for what their consoles are. And it might be one of the reasons why they have amazing pickup very early and capture a lot of market share and then just suddenly lose it. In any case, great discussion, huh? A lot of, lot of cool things to think about this week. Um, really deep question here in the Weekly Ringer, and th those are the ones I love the best. That being said, I also love pretty stupid, silly questions, and maybe I've gotten away from that a little bit, and I'll ask some more of those um, as we move forward. But as many of you know, and if you don't know, then you should climb out from under the rock that you're living under, um, E3 happened. And we talked about it many times already on the Weekly Ringer thus far. This E3, before I give you all of my thoughts, obviously, Rue and I are going to be doing a podcast very soon to be able to talk about these things in depth. But um, E3 this year was a little bit different than I think it's ever been. And it still continues on with the tradition of E3. But let's, 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 think, let's back up a little bit. If you watch the coverage of E3, you watch the hype around E3, you, you soon realize, if many of you have not, that E3 is the largest video gaming event of the year. It is the industry conference. It is the de facto industry conference, as a matter of fact. It is the, the place where people sell video games, where all the new things come out, where all the new folks, you know, on the block get to, to kind of tout their wares, where folks are able to show off the things they've been working on and hopefully sell a few copies, right? E3 is... Um, is hyped up as being the biggest thing that video games do every single year. Now, before I get into whether I think that it is or it isn't that way, I, I think traditional wisdom, and those of us that have seen E3 for many, many years now, would say that E3 has had many different faces. It's done many different kinds of things, and the purpose of which has changed you know, a few times. Uh, during the course of, of E3's, uh, what, 10-year, 15-year, I'm trying to remember. Anyway, I think it was 15 years. I think it was the 15th E3 this year. Anyway, the point is, um, in that time, it's changed quite a bit. And I wanted to ask you guys a question about that for next week regarding E3. Before I really get into all the stuff that happened at E3, maybe we'll do a couple ringers about it, um, like I did last year. But here's a question I want to ask you about E3 itself. And not necessarily this iteration of E3, blah, blah, blah. Is E3 still all it's cracked up to be? Now think about that for a second. You know, what am I asking with this? I'm asking you guys, is E3 kind of still living up to the hype that it builds, that it's built around itself, right? Um, is it still the de facto, you know, standard in how gaming is sold and bought in America? Is the hype still worth it? Um, is it all it's cracked up to be? That's my question for next week. And I think you guys probably have a lot to say about it. I'm sure many of you have checked out the coverage um, of E3 already. If you haven't, I would recommend going back and taking a look uh, at, at some of the events that happened at E3, some of the games that were launched at E3. I think there were a lot of really cool things to come to light. 
Uh, a lot of the innovations that were shown at E3 had nothing to do with video games, but I think they're very interesting to look at nonetheless. In any case, take a look at the coverage. Take a look at Roos coverage with RetroWare as a part of RetroWare TV at E3. Um, see what you have to say about that as well. And let me know, is E3 still all it's cracked up to be? That is the question for next week here on the Weekly Ringer on the Clan of the Grey Wolf. I am the Commodore, and there is no reset button.